Hello, I'm Nicolette Pombo Fancel, editor of ESI Africa magazine. I'm coming to you today from the African Utility Week studio. And with me is Robert Nibiru, who is the distribution management expert at the um, energy sorry, uh, the Energy Utility Corporation Limited in Rwanda. Welcome Robert. Thank you. Um, Robert, at the last time I interviewed you, yes. you were um, at Umeme in yes. Uganda yes. and you've now recently moved to Rwanda. Yes. I'd like to hear from you, what have you found in terms of the utility space in Rwanda? Is it very similar to in Uganda or are there various diff differences? Uh, thank you Nicolette, thank you for the opportunity again to, to come to the studio. Um, I was uh, in Umeme, yes, until recently, and I moved to Rwanda. And uh, from uh, an environmental point of view, the, there are many similarities. Uh, I mean, you have all the usual challenges of network constraints, uh, network stress, especially in uh, LV and MV. Uh, you have the usual issues concerning uh, losses and loss yes. management. Um, customer service levels and things like that. Um, maybe the, the, only, the only real difference is right now the Energy Utility Corporation uh, Limited, which I, I'm used to abbreviating EUCL, <laughs> is 100% uh, is government owned, mm -hmm. as opposed to MEME, which is a totally private entity, uh, which is running a, a, a business on concession from the government of Uganda. So that's, that's one of the major differences. So it is still very much uh, influenced by the government in its uh, uh, bid to commercialize and uh, transform the sector in Rwanda. Otherwise, mm, similarities are there, quite more similarities and differences. Yeah. Right. Mm. I, I think uh, it's been a good move for you mm. and uh, to uh, broaden your experience around uh, different African markets. Yes. So in terms of uh, um, the, the African energy industry, what do you feel are the reforms that are needing to take place? Um, with respect to the African uh, utility space, one of the things that uh, kills us in Africa here is the issue of efficiency of operations. I believe we're, we are not leveraging the opportunities we can gain from uh, operational efficiency. Um, there's a lot, the, the business uh, is cost heavy because of lack of efficiency. And the greatest efficiencies to be gained are on the core business of the business, which is energy delivery which is an engineering issue. Now, if you can get that engineering kit efficient, you can leverage up to 40 to 50% gains, just direct financial translation, which can work into the tariff, can work into very many things in terms of uh, opportunities for investment, growth of the sector. So, so I believe that uh, as far as reform is concerned, the focus should be on adopting models that will promote efficiency of operations, unbundling so that you can expose the different uh, leakage, uh, leakage areas in terms of revenue, uh, holding people accountable by starting at the, that, at, the, at the sector level and drilling down to the various component uh, units within the sector. There's so, there's so many different things that you can do there that, that would help a great deal. And I believe there's, there's no, there's, it's not rocket science. There's, there's no real miracle that, 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 will, that, will, that, that has to be done. All you have to do is do the hard work of making the utilities efficient, so you'll have cost, you know, real good tariffs uh, that people can afford, have opportunities for investment to grow, and you have uh, access, which is <laughs> what everybody wants for everybody. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I, you talk a lot about the tariff. Yeah. And, uh, I think that uh, there's been announcements from Zimbabwe, from South Africa, from various countries uh, in, in southern, Af uh, southern African region as well as uh, in uh, West Africa, where they talk about um, the increasing of um, the tariff. And so how, where do we stop in terms of that? Because how much can the consumer afford to be able to pay for energy? Okay. Um there are so many, it's a loaded subject. It is a loaded subject. First and foremost, the tariff 
is sensitive because very many people view it differently. Uh, I shared with you, Nicolette, through an article I wrote uh, in ESI magazine that the biggest problem is each constituent stakeholder is fighting for their stake in the tariff and behaving oblivious to the, 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 the other stakeholders' needs as far as the tariffs are concerned. And they are at loggerheads. So we need to appreciate and understand each stakeholder and come to the table and find a common ground. For example, uh, the customer has a stake in the tariff. They will be willing to pay if the service is right and if it's affordable. The utility service providers have a stake in the tariff. They need a tariff that can support their revenue requirement to run the business. The policy makers have a stake in the tariff. Uh, they have a, a political mandate to make sure that people have access to electricity and electricity that they can afford. So you see all these competing uh, needs uh, around one, <laughs> one parameter. And the only way we can make it work is by getting all different stakeholders in a room, recognizing each other's needs and working smartly and openly and transparently towards the ultimate goal. A tariff that will meet everybody's needs, that will be, af that will be affordable for, for the end user. Yeah. Now besides the, the tariff um, that a utility needs to focus on, yeah. they have um, technical and non-technical losses. Yeah. Uh, as a, a distribution management expert, what would you advise the utilities in order to reduce those losses? Um, as far as uh, technical and non-technical losses are concerned, um, it is a huge issue. Uh, loss figures vary anywhere from 19 to... 30, 40 percent on the, in the sub-Saharan African space. And where, wherever the losses exist, that is uh, a cost that goes directly to the end user. We must also recognize that because access is not 100 percent, and in many cases it's below 40 percent in many of the sub-Saharan African countries, you have, uh, especially where you have uh, non-cost reflective tariffs, you have the rest of the country the country's revenues subsidizing a small few people who are using that electricity. Yet those people using the electricity are not using it uh, wisely and smartly. They're actually wasting it. So the, the losses issue comes, comes to mind uh, very, very clearly. When it comes to loss reduction, in most cases, uh, technical loss reduction requires a lot of heavy investment in the network, and it should not be ignored. It's something that needs to be done. So that's something that needs proper simulation, proper network analysis, and long-term, very sober commitment towards good prioritization so that you get maximum value for every shilling that you put on the network. When it comes to non-technical losses, that's mainly administrative. Administrative on the commercial side of a utility to make sure that you do your revenue uh, cycle functions well. Make sure that you have clearly documented all your customers and things like that. You also must start to work with the culture of the society in which you are to make it uh, not kosher to steal electricity. And that is a very broad thing that requires a lot of stakeholder uh, involvement. You need the government involved, you need civil society involved, you need uh, uh, <coughs> the utilities themselves involved such that you send a message, a consistent, concerted message that stealing electricity is not right. Another thing that needs to be done is strengthen the laws. Once that is in place, then you can reach a place where you're fighting commercial losses down to the very least that they should be, which is zero. Uh, it's hard to get there, but at least a very low bit. And then you remain with this big animal of, of technical losses that you're, you're fighting with uh, in a systematic, uh, medium to long term view to, to put it at a manageable figure depending on on where your network is, maybe around 10%. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that would be manageable for a utility to then stay, uh, you know, in, a, in being an effective utility, being oh, yes. able to oh, deliver. Yes. Yeah. Because once, once you get rid of the losses, just, just think about it. If you have 40% uh, losses, it's, uh, I always use this uh, example, just like having a, 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 a bread factory and you give your salesman a thousand loaves and he comes back with money for 60 loaves. He says, you know, the 40 loaves uh, 
they, they were lost. <laughs> they lost it. I mean, nobody is laughing. <laughs> That's totally ridiculous. Yet with energy, it seems okay. Why? Yeah. It should not be okay. It should not be okay. Energy is a commodity and we need to look after it because it's costly. I mean, look at what you have to go through to, to generate it, to, to deliver it. So, so no, losses are a big issue and they're costly. They're quite costly. Well, lastly, Robert, um, you talk a lot about uh, the, the way that the utility business can be run. And as an advisory board member to African Utility Week, yes. what are your predictions for the next five years? What is that utility space going to be looking like? As far as uh, the African utility space is concerned, I predict that uh, we are at the cusp where most governments have realized that the business of running a utility is not best placed in the hands of government. And so I think we're going to see a final rollout of, of uh, whatever you want to call it, privatizations, uh, deregulations, in an effort to get the utility space more efficient. Why? Because uh, governments have realized that you cannot, you cannot just continue subsidizing and, and, uh, and uh, mitigating the pressures of an inefficient utility. Uh, I also see that because Africa is one of the few growth areas left in the world, and the, 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 the crest of a growth wave is on things like energy development, water development, agro development, those kind of things, infrastructure. Uh, the, 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 the energy sector is going to be a place where we'll have a lot of investment coming in. We've already seen the initiative that we saw in the last AUW is falling on this one, uh, partnering with Power Africa and many other people. There's a lot of money that's coming in because they recognize that the place to invest is Africa. So we're going to see a lot of growth in networks, a lot of growth in uh, generation, a lot of growth in distribution, and uh, it's going to be an exciting area for the, for the power technocrat. So that, that's, that's where I see uh, developments. The last uh, bit that I see, and which is very exciting, and you can see it nowadays, Africa is a place where people are adopting cutting edge technology for their operations. So we're going to see innovation like, like you've never seen. I'll tell you that I'm now seeing many utilities having uh, apps on, on, on Google Play for, <laughs> you know, two years ago, you would not have thought yeah. about that, a utility having an app, you know, where you check your balance, pay your fees and all that. So we're going to see a lot of innovation in what? In, in uh, adoption of technology and customer service. Well, thank you for that message, Robert. And here at African Utility Week, we have an innovation hub. Yes. Um, yeah. Thank you for watching. I'm Nicolette Pompapansale, coming to you from the African Utility Week studio.